Thank you very much, Richard, and uh, a great pleasure to be here. Let's see if that uh, comes up on the screen. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, uh, George Gramatopoulos, who's here today, who uh, was a fellow with us who uh, led this uh, research project. And uh, as uh, Richard uh, alluded to, uh, we look, wanted to look at pelvic positioning and its impact on cup positioning, uh, comparing supine and lateral. These are uh, my disclosures that are <coughs> not relevant to this talk. We all know that uh, proper cup orientation is an important determinant of outcome after joint replacement surgery. Uh, you have the save zones, which are usually assessed in the supine AP pelvis. And we know that the resultant uh, cup orientation is dependent on at the time of impaction at surgery, as well as the orientation of the pelvis at that time. And to achieve primary uh, optimal cup orientation in surgery, you want a minimal difference between what you achieve in surgery and what you measured radiographically. So the purpose of this study was to determine the difference in pelvic position, tilt, obliquity, and rotation that occurs between surgery and post-op radiographic assessment, examine how these differences influence subsequent cup orientation, and establish whether pelvic and cup orientation differences exist between patient position between supine and lateral, as well as between different surgeons. So this is a retrospective cohort, IDB approved, all primary hips. We, at our center, it is a standard practice that uh, interop AP pelvises are taken at the time of surgery. And this was a consecutive a group of patients uh, that had the toll hip between 2014 and 2015. Uh, the technique, uh, either supine or lateral position is standardized in terms of removing all retractors and then uh, proper uh, site, surgical site is covered. And then the x-ray technician is called and we have a digitized image and uh, with proper beam orientation. So we identified over 340 cases, mean age 67, uh, gender distribution slightly more females, and uh, BMI 29. We had a, a, an equal distribution of uh, supine anterior approach and lateral posterior approaches in each group. Uh, surgeon A, and I think you have to pay attention, that's the key in this paper, did both anterior supine and lateral posterior approaches when we looked at his cup orientation data. Surgeon B is uh, supine, uh, anterior, and then surgeon C is purely posterior. We define the, uh, uh, in terms of pelvic motion, the three axes in terms of uh, obliquity, uh, tilt, and rotation and, uh, of the pelvis uh, in those aspects. When we uh, looked at cup orientation, we used EBRA. We looked at change in inclination, which is post-op minus interop, and similarly for antiversion and obliquity. A, greater than, a difference greater than 10 degrees was considered significant. In order to calculate uh, the tilt and rotation differences, we define the radiographic inclination and radiographic antiversion as defined by Murray. This uh, algorithm or optimization scheme was to ensure that the x-rays were comparable uh, intra-op and post-op controlling for rotation and uh, tilt of the pelvis. And that's an algorithm, and they would have to match in terms of the radiographic uh, antiversion and inclination. And when you had the match, that uh, patient subset x-ray patient was included in the study. Others were excluded. So if you look at the results, uh, the mean you know, uh, inclination uh, was an interversion what you would expect. You know, uh, We had about 60% uh, within uh, the safe zone that we arbitrarily defined, which is currently what's accepted, four degrees of abduction, 20 degrees of antiversion. And, um, so, uh, and then the pelvic differences intraoperatively, you can see three, one, and zero degrees. So not big, big uh, two differences. If we look at the uh, change in inclination and cup orientation, there was a significant correlation between the change in inclination as a function of change in tilt and rotation with uh, strong correlation, not as much for change in antiversion comparing change in tilt and rotation. So this basically shows what is the influence of tilt, change in tilt and rotation on the inclination versus antiversion, more uh, strong correlation with the inclination. If you had a change of inclination or antiversion of more than 10 degrees, you were four times more likely to have your cup outside of the safe zone. If you look at the combined data of all the surgeons, supine versus lateral, you can see that the mean are 
pretty comparable, but the, the other aspect that's more critical, 73% of the cups were in the safe zone in the supine position versus only 44% in the lateral position. And you can see this was obviously associated with a much higher percentage of change and in inclination and rotation in the lateral position of 35% versus 5%. And this is uh, the crux of the, of the paper, of the analysis. You can see comparing the, th uh, the three positions. Uh, surgeon A is the guy that did both approaches. And uh, you can see in the middle is the supine position. You can see how tar tight the target is when comparing two surgeons. You look at the same surgeon, which is surgeon A, which is the lateral decubitus position, and you can see his cup orientation or, or uh, accuracy is much less reliable and similar to the guy that uh, did the lateral position only. So I think this is really demonstrates with the, in the same surgeon, much more reliable cup position in the supine position compared to the lateral position, and that matches the data from the other two surgeons that were doing purely lateral position based total hips versus supine position. So I think the limitations of this study, obviously uh, we didn't show any correlation to clinical function and or risk of instability. Uh, you know, we didn't assess the impact of pelvic incidence and cup orientation on, uh, and, on cup orientation, should I say. And we know that the pelvic incidence certainly has an impact on, on pelvic range of motion and its impact on instability. So in conclusion, uh, there are differences in pelvic rotation between uh, sur in surgery and post-op and associated with cup malleolar rotation and a high percentage of cases. Pelvic orientation differences are less in the supine position, leading to more accurate cup orientation. And I think it's important that uh, uh, there is some intra-surgeon intra uh, pelvic and cup variability that was detected in this paper. And that's illustrate the difficulty and reliability in positioning pelvis with uh, the pelvis in a proper position and reliable position with current technology. Thank you. Merci.